pray. Lord Jesus, it is good to be together here singing your praises. Truly all we have is you, and with you we have everything. God, may it be true that in every heart gathered here today would be an uncompromising loyalty to give up everything to have you. God, as we contemplate in the next few moments what your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, has done on behalf of sinners, we pray that it would have the effects on our heart that you intend. Self-examination over sin, uh, self-examination over the state of our own hearts, and a longing for Christ's return. And we ask it in his name. Amen. You may be seated. At this point in our service, we take the Lord's table. We celebrate communion. We're going to do so by opening the scriptures together. And if you don't have a Bible, uh, we'd love to put a Bible in your hands. You can let the kind gentleman up here up front know that you need one this morning just by simply raising your hand. And if you don't own a Bible, we would love to give this to you as a gift that you may keep so that you can read God's word for yourself. I'd like to turn your attention this morning to Isaiah 53. I'm simply going to read the text of Isaiah 53, really beginning back in chapter 52, verse 13, as our communion meditation this morning. And and as we prepare to do that, I want you to to contemplate a couple of things. If you're here this morning and you can't sing with all your heart, all I have is Christ. If you are holding out on the Lord and, and your life really just belongs to you, I want you to know that Taking communion is not for you, it's for Christians. It's a a memory, a remembrance of what Christ has done on behalf of those who have cast their lives upon him. And if you find yourself here this morning and you're not a Christian, I want you to listen to words written about Jesus 700 years before he came. And I want you to consider what he has done on behalf of sinners. And this would be a wonderful time for you to surrender to Jesus Christ, to believe in him for the first time and receive even today eternal life and the free gift of righteousness by faith. If you're here this morning and you are a believer, it doesn't matter if you're a member here or just visiting, we would invite you to partake in the Lord's table. This is a remembrance of God's people gathered together of what Christ has done. There will be a few moments of silence intended for you to examine your own heart, confess any known sins, make plans for repentance, but then to take freely of the bread and the cup which have been given for us to remind us of what Jesus has already accomplished for all who believe. Free access to God, adoption, citizenship in heaven, forgiveness, justification. All of those things purchased for us by what I'm about to read. You can follow along if you like in your own Bible. Isaiah 52, beginning in verse 13. Behold, my servant that is, Jesus, will prosper. He will be high and lifted up and greatly exalted, just as many were astonished at you, my people. So his appearance was marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. Thus, he will sprinkle many nations. Kings will shut their mouths on account of him, for what had not been told them they will see, and what they had not heard they will understand." Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of Yahweh been revealed? For he grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of parched ground. He has no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him, nor appearance that we should be attracted to him. He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. 
Each of us has turned to his own way, but Yahweh has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter and like a sheep that is silent before its shearers, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people to whom the stroke was due? His grave was assigned with wicked men, Yet he was with a rich man in his death because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. But Yahweh was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief. If he would render himself as a guilt offering, he would see his offspring. He will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of Yahweh will prosper in his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see and be satisfied. By his knowledge, the righteous one, my servant, will justify the many as he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great. He will divide the treasure with the strong because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he himself bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. transgressors. These words written by Israel's prophet will be sung one day by Israel in repentance and can be sung by us as we revel in Israel's Messiah provided for salvation to Gentiles. The men are going to come now and distribute the elements of communion. Meditate on these things. Examine your own hearts. When your heart is ready, please take them, and I will close us in prayer.